Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode three of the Nova Notes podcast, where we show off VRChat creators, communities, and many more creations inside of VRChat. I'm your host, Nova Ed Player, and for this episode, uh, we have the lovely Yuki from Kocha no Yakuza. Yuki, how you doing? Uh, could be better, but hi, how you doing? Uh, mm-hmm. doing okay. <laughs> doing okay. Uh, yeah, this is like the third time we've re-recorded uh this first bit because of uh Steam VR issues. Uh, which <laughs> if you've watched episode two, you'll you know what I'm talking about. But for the most part, we did fix it, so we're gonna try to keep going on as is. Uh, yippee! <laughs> yippee, indeed. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, so you are one of the heads of Kocha no Yakuza, the uh, Yakuza roleplay community. You want to give a little brief explanation of what it is and what you guys do? Brief explanation. Uh, with my with my head, that's hard, but uh, let's go. So, Kocha no Yakuza, roleplay community, founded in 2021. So by now, we're on the VR to the roleplay scene for two and a half years. And we're pretty much based on the games a video game series called yakuza slash like a dragon because they recently renamed themselves or or rather also we are also based on uh well irl yakuza we do our research we have um, right now at home i have about seven eight actual yakuza crime books where um, with the founder we pretty much just uh, research what the actual yakuza is doing and how they are how they are actually working so pretty much just imagine us as a bunch of yakuza peeps going around the streets and beating people up good stuff heck yeah heck. always want to beat people up <laughs> <laughs> uh, i feel like a lot of vr check communities are like that whether they like to believe it or not <laughs> but Hey, you know, mm. it, it's cool It's cool to build a concept, or, you know, around such a specific group, um, you know, of people, you know, because there's other military sims and, you know, other types of groups like that. But to do like one specifically for Yakuza is definitely an interesting concept. You know, it's it's one of those things that definitely puts apart from, you know, other fighting type of role play communities. Indeed, if I'm if I'm correct, we should be the only one. Currently on the VR chat roleplay scene, the only Yakuza roleplay group. There might have been uh, more back then. I remember maybe mentioning, like someone mentioned to me before, that there used to be one before, but it never got as big as we did actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I and I've heard there's a few uh, there's a few different there's a few smaller communities like Yakuza. Like if I, I if I remember correctly, one of them was uh, I think Tojo VR. I could be wrong. In that aspect? Oh, Tojo Tojo Clan VR is not a roleplay community. Tojo Clan VR is a based is a community of Yakuza games enjoyers and together mm. they uh do like Yakuza related stuff as in they mod the games, you know, they take assets and so on, but they're not a roleplay community. Gotcha, gotcha. So, you know, let's let's go into the like the events that you guys hold. You know, what if, you know, for those that are listening, you know, give give life an explanation of what it would be like to experience a Coach of Noyak as a role play event. All right. So we have a tiny bit of a set of rules, let's say. So main things that you need to know when you're experiencing an event in Coach no Yakuza, at least especially from the side of like our members, you respect your higher ups right so you re- you listen to your higher ups whatever they say if if a higher up says black is white then white it fucking is <laughs> sorry for that <laughs> well then we also we use japanese names of ranks so for example my in character rank is a shategashira i'm in if we're going to translate it it would be somehow similar to a lieutenant so basically, you also need to recognize people based on the ranks, right? Basically, like as in uh, as in military, we kind of the yakuza kind of gets like a military type of ranking. So respect your higher ups. We go by Japanese names. So my in character name is Aomi Yuki, right? So you also have to address people correctly. For example, my name in character for you would be Aomi Sama. Mm, Sama, gotcha. because I'm a. High, high rank, you know. Understood. 
uh, we also go in the events and we say uh, a line that is also accompanied by a bow. It's Otskare Samades. <laughs> Wanna try pronouncing that? Uh, say, say it one more time. Say it one more time. Otskare Samades. Otskare Samades. Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. You <laughs> get did. plus point from me. Hey, let, let, <laughs> let's go. We, we love to see that. <laughs> let's go. I'm not going to break your kneecaps. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh... But pretty much around around the events, like, um, let's say you get a mission, uh, Cyberware Retrieval. We did these in the back uh, because we are set in 2044 at the moment. We also kind of implement Cyberpunk into our lore. So let's say you get some Cyberware on you. Uh, you can have Cybernetics. And uh, we got missions like cyberware retrieval when someone has like an NPC has a cybernetic and basically uh, a company wants you to go and take it away from them. Like maybe they didn't pay or something like that. So we're going to go find that person, beat them up, take the cybernetic and get paid because we get uh, we return it to the company. Basically, as you, you get you get a mission, you go accomplish, you get paid. Like gotcha. that. <laughs> interesting, interesting. You know, so what what other what other types of like uh like you so you have mission based ones. Do you have any other type of role play events like throughout the community? Uh we do actually. We it's called social RP. So it's pretty much we do we host these bi weekly and those bi weeklies are also divided into two different ones. So we get social RPs at the HQ which is our own community closed social RP, uh, which we go into our HQ and the higher ups, like, let's say we think of like some tasks to do and we're going to get all the people that are, that are in the room with us. We basically join the event. We're going to get, uh, get them to do these tasks. And afterwards, or basically during it, you, you talk with other characters as your character. So basically, if, you, if we were in character right now, I would talk with you as Aomi Yuki, you would talk with me as your character. And uh, it's just like talking like that during those tasks. And after the tasks are done, we usually go hang out at our main area of just like, and basically just hang out. No tasks involved, just like simple social RP, simple, simple socializing in character, and then we close off. But if we are doing that one on one week, then the other bi-weekly one is social RP at the Purgatory, which is a metaverse open social RP. Therefore, anyone can join. It's not close to only our community. It's open to even other, other communities, other role players, as long as you don't cause uh, mischief within our world you just you can join in you can socialize meanwhile we take care of the actual like business stuff so the purgatory one is basically we have a lot of businesses uh next to each other in a district uh it's an underground subway so we basically built it there that we have underground businesses like a bar, like a sushi, sushi restaurant, ramen shop. There's an arcade, there's a casino or even an underground fighting, fighting arena. And uh, we have people basically being staffed there who take care of like the administration and, you know, take care of the people overall. And uh, it's again a social RP. You just hang out, but basically, you you imagine you just go to a bar and you just drink with your characters, or you go to a restaurant and you eat there, or the underground fighting arena, which has been very popular with other communities recently, is basically that we pair up random pairs, and they just fight each other in a cage. Interesting. So, like a like a UFC <laughs> type of fight, or is it more like more sanctioned? Mm. or less sanctioned it's it's um uh, it's kind of a mix because sometimes we also have a boss fight there we just make like a boss avatar boss npc and we just do uh, do a boss fight there which one of the times it has been astel from elden ring hmm. <laughs> so for example that but uh those one-on-one -on -one fights between people we usually limit them to like melee only, so hands, legs, but 
there has been times where we also allowed guns, where we also allowed um, swords and so on. So it's like, uh, sometimes it's a mix. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Well, that's cool. You know, different. it's definitely cool that you have different types of events within the community rather than just be one event like throughout. Like that's uh, something that I've heard, oh, yeah. you know, some communities struggle with. So it's it's cool that you have a diverse catalog yeah. of events. It's true. I know the Milsim communities especially are a lot of focus on just well operations you just go you, you just go you shoot the shoot and that's it well for us it's a more it's there's a lot of stuff that you can do i'm not even talking about the family events which uh there's also basically small scale events because we are uh if you know yakuza structure basically we are a wall a big clan that's built from families so as in not families as in brother sister mother father no uh uh, it's an interesting hierarchy, hard to explain to someone who doesn't understand it very well. But basically you get a matriarch, then you get a captain of the family, and those two are leading the families, and then you get like also the lower ranks. And it basically is repeating all the time, all the time, because that family can also have a subsidiary family, that subsidiary can also have its own subsidiary, and it still goes the same. So basically the whole clan is built from these types of families. And those families have also have their own events, which are more uh, on the smaller scale, not like 20 people plus, but let's say maybe five, five players go in and enjoy an event. And it's way more social. You can hang out with those characters more because, you know, you have, um, you don't have to pay attention to 20 freaking people around you. It's a lot smaller. Yeah. So, and yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a lot smaller and it's, a lot more manageable. You also don't need enough, uh, that uh, like a lot of NPCs for it. You can just manage it way more easily. You can do way more easier outgoing stuff. Remember, like for example, my family recently had an event where uh, we basically went to help out in a hospital as if uh, ER that they were understaffed. Basically, in lore, the hospital was understaffed, so they called upon my family to join and um, be basically like an ER doctors. So they had like NPCs come in, oh, oh yeah, my, my head hurts. Okay, let's go to the, to the room, let's like see what's up. And we were just like doing this, not serious at all, just like, you know, very lighthearted. The, we, our characters that we were there, we talked with each other, it was pretty fun. You know, no stress, no rush, just simple, simple, like fun and not, not hard event at all. So those events are also happening within the families. Gotcha. Um, you know, you, you, you're talking about the families, like how many, how many families are there mm. in the community? So there are four main families. So let's say you have Murasaki clan and there are lieutenants of the Murasaki clan. So those lieutenants have their families. So I have one which is Aomi family, then there's Hoshino family, then there's Gorusetsuko family and Rokudan family. Those are the four main ones. And down uh, from then we have the subsidiaries, which right now we have three subsidiaries. Hmm. So I, Aomi family has one and Rokudan family has two subsidiaries. So in total, we have seven. Oh, neat. Dang. But okay. there's way more planned. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Interesting. Um, <laughs> no, that's cool, though. You know, it's cool that, you know, you can make a family and then like a subsidiary inside of it. Mm. You know, it's definitely, you know, mm. more, more interesting concepts that, you know, I'm, I'm definitely attuned to, um, you know. Oh, yeah. And. Each of those families also have different focuses. So, for example, one family focuses more on, let's say, blackmailing. Second family focuses more on smuggling. One family focuses on weapons. Stuff like this, basically. So when you're, when you're a, a person, new person in the community, you choose which family you want to go to. And you choose based on maybe lore of your character. I have a bunch of people in my family that went in because they are connected to me in character with their backstory. Or they just seem like, hey, this one family fits me more. I want to do this more, so I'm going to go there. 
Fair enough. Fair Pretty enough. much. Cool. Um, you know, so you, you say you said that uh, you know, you do like the whole metaverse open events. Um, you know, is it just like a hangout or do you guys have like a certain event planned for those type of events? Um I was just kind of curious on a little bit more. Well, it's the it's the social RP in the purgatory. Uh, we get uh, we get the businesses. We have people staffing there, and basically, just any role player from the within the metaverse can join in and just uh, well be in character, just socialize in character. Maybe quote unquote buy some stuff. Like we sell weapons there in a weapon store. We have the bar. We have the arena fights. So it's basically really just a simple hangout in character. Right, you still need to follow our stuff. We still, you still need to follow our rules. Like, we are set somewhere. You know, you cannot really break uh, where we are set in. You cannot, you, you know, imagine uh, we are set in 2044, and like out of nowhere, a uh, freaking 1920s, like I don't know, something bring go, goes in and like, you know. Uh, starts breaking our lore. No, you, you still need to go with uh, what we set up. Basically, you don't have to worry about anything because we are the ones providing you. Gotcha. It's just like, you know, make sure to not, make sure to not, uh, well, not be a frick. <laughs> you, you, you like behave, behave yourself pretty much. And uh, don't bring stuff you wouldn't want to like bring back either and so on. Like you, we cannot... I don't. I don't really know how to explain it, no. But like, it's um. So like, don't be a troll, and you know, uh, don't don't bring yeah. Don't bring drama, you know, outside drama and stuff like it's pretty yeah, pretty common yeah, pretty common yeah. procedure stuff. Pretty much, pretty much. There's, you know, if for example, if your character gets injured in metaverse, you know, you cannot really bring it to our close to lore either. Pretty much because we are we're also close to lore. Right, so we don't, we are not really influenced by what's happening by in metaverse. Like, there are metaverse metaverse lobbies which are literally metaverse, but we are closed lore with occasional metaverse open lobby. Mm, so the okay. metaverse open metaverse is like not uh, influencing us that much, because we open those metaverse open lobbies only once a month. Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. Um, I guess another question I would have would be, um, you were talking about uh, hmm. the fights and stuff. Uh, and you know how mm -hmm. people use their hands and legs. Uh, what about people that are like hands mm -hmm. only, or maybe those that are desktop? For those that I don't know. So, hands only. You can still fight. You can still pretty much, you know, throw a punch. Um, if you have OVR, even better because you can, uh, you know, you can role play a tiny bit more when you when you have OVR when you, um. You can do certain stuff with OVR, like I don't know, flying away, doing doing a wannabe kick with with like OVR. Uh, you know, you you need to adapt in this sort of a way. Uh, I but the the funny thing is desktops, right? We have avatars in our community which are desktop compatible, so we have avatars which we made that um, have a special layer within, if you know how Unity works, if you know how avatar creation works, there, there, there is action layer, which is made uh, to basically, you can control your limbs with animations. So imagine you take a kicking animation, like generic, generic kicking animation, and you put it on your avatar and to set it up correctly, you have it as a toggle on your menu, you press it, and your avatar does a kick. So we set up our avatars that way, where we can also fight in desktop. So we are also, dis we are not desktop, li like, we are not limited to having VR only. I know there are communities who are limited to that, that they don't accept desktop people. We know how to make desktop avatars and we know how to help you how to make one so um for example one of our staff people is a master in desktop animations dude never had vr but he can fight better than most vr people oh wow <laughs> <laughs> definitely seems like a character to be reckoned with 
oh hell yeah <laughs> you don't want to mess with him that uh yeah the the fucking avatar uh, big ass sword and he he can do you know like those special moves like where you uh, where you start spinning around like in a fucking tornado and it's I don't know what is it called like a waterfall dance I think is the move called it's like from a game like as if imagine Elden Ring or something like that and he can do that he knows how he set it up that he can put uh, as if targets into the world where he wants to hit huh. so meanwhile you see that avatar standing but his avatar, uh, or like he himself, can actually move around, put in those targets, and then he triggers the animation, and it does it. That's pretty. That's pretty cool to think about. Um, <laughs> he, like that's cool. That's really cool. Like that's like that's a cool thing that you know. I don't, as far as I'm aware of, not a lot of communities have that. Like you said, you know, a lot of you know role plays they require VR, whether half body or full body. So to include desktop players, like yeah. you know, that's that's a whole nother ballpark. Um, how, if you had to, if you had to estimate, cause I don't know if you know the exact number on hand, like how many desktop players do you have uh, currently? Give or take. Uh, give or take. Mm, considering we have around 150 people that are currently members of the community. I suppose I can like 20, 30. Uh, a lot of them, though, are. How do I say that? We have we have people who who are actively on desktop. We we have people who don't go to events as much. But even I made um, several desktop compatible avatars that work with desktop. Uh, you know, you can fight in. We have a community avatar that is available to all the people if. Even for any reason, you suddenly had no VR, you know, you can still use it. And, uh, yeah, I can think of right now at least four people and all of us, all of the people have made the stuff themselves. They have custom avatars who are able to do that. So there's the staff member that I talked about. There's another staff member that I didn't mention. Uh, and there's one avatar that I created. And then there's another another person who is also literally getting the animations from the Yakuza games. Oh, wow. So, like, they just take the exact animation from the game? Or is it, like, custom made by hand? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. It, they take the animations. But the staff, uh, the, the, the staff person that I talked about, he actually makes those animations himself. Oh, wow. So... For example, uh, we last year during PJKT Fest, there we hosted an event there, which was called Kochino Boss Rush. It was a little training, roleplay training event where we were Sima in character and we were uh, basically showing people how we fight. We were teaching them little like uh, combos with uh, fists, basically like punching for for hit combo. We were teaching them even with a melee weapon. And afterwards, we went to have a boss fight. So basically, the people that we just taught how to fight, they helped us defeat Astel from Elden Ring. And the wall Astel model, the the model itself was ripped from Elden Ring. The animations. On the model was handmade by the staff member. His name is Suklo. Suklo is the god of desktop animations. He animates everything himself. And again, the Astel, Astel model, the Astel avatar, is insane. Every single attack, everything is animated by hand. That's insane. No, and I... mind you, there's... There's like twelve attacks, attacks actually in total. Oh wow, that's that's absolutely insane. Like that that's crazy to think about. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, and you know, granted, uh, some people may not know what Elden Rings is. Uh, essentially, when when uh, Yuki mentions the boss, essentially think of a giant, uh, a giant enemy monster that has like, uh, if I remember correctly, it has like floating tendrils like kind of things with like orbs and stuff 
it, it's been a while. To... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's some some crazy some crazy stuff, you know. Like, uh, I might throw I might throw a little clip like right here uh, of like some of the footage uh, from the teaser trailer. Um, good luck, post editor Novid. Oh, anyway. I can't even choke as the <laughs> avatar. <laughs> But it's it's yeah it's definitely cool to see that there's you know you get all these amazing creators you know making epic things like this boss fight you know <laughs> so it, it's really cool it's really cool um, and I know you watched the uh, the first episode with Gear Gabo he was high praising Kocho uh, with, their in, with their in, <laughs> with their uh, with their inclusion and stuff um, I I, I can tell you, I can tell you he he misses a, he's a busy bird as always but. Uh, he always does. Uh, rec- he yeah, always, he always does recognize you guys, um, but yeah, no. So you know, as a as a VR community, um, what mm. are some what are some of the like challenges you guys have faced? Maybe like growing your community. We we had a big big jump from the beginning. We didn't really start from zero like yes we started from zero we everything that we made we um you know it was made uh by the founding people i'm sadly not one of the founders but i've been in the community even before it was actually published uh because i've been friends with the founders so i was i was there basically during the founding of it just not one of the founders Mm. and uh we had a big jump start because we were friends with all of the big communities. So we were friends with a community Mortician Syndicate. Or we were also friends with the Vifor. And both of these communities are very big in VR chat. And um, so we had a tiny bit of a jump start. Uh, we already had people basically hanging out with us since the day one. We had people coming in and, you know, spreading the word around. And a lot of our people came in. Uh, back then, we also used to do a lot of public patrolling, which would essentially mean that we go into a public world and we basically, as if, recruit people. It wasn't directly recruiting, but let's say we're just gonna... We, we, we used to have, like, fights in the public. We would pick up someone from the public and, like, hey, wanna have a fight? And we had a health bar above our heads and basically made them fight us. Anyway, and that's how we spread the word around before. Uh, sadly, with the growing of our community and also getting more serious about stuff, uh, we stopped growing actively like so. We stopped doing more. Uh, we stopped doing a lot of public stuff, and a lot of people know about us only right now thanks to uh, the different communities. We had a lot of uh, people coming in from Vifuware, and our people also went uh, went to Vifuware, and we were just exchanging people like this recently a lot, and it's been fun. The new people are awesome, but you know, it the wall growing is not there anymore. Like yes, we are getting new people, but for us to actually, how do I say that? go up there again we should be getting even more people and we've been struggling with that we just been struggling getting um more members new members you know more active people all of us are busy and um sadly there's been a lot of just um busyness school work mental health issues and it's been it's been putting the community down a bit you know so if we had like if we could see new people if we could see maybe new faces enjoying the community rather than all the old people you know still there um it would it could maybe give us a little bit of more motivation to do something obviously we have people who enjoy it we that enjoy our stuff but it's um Imagine as if it just stopped. It was going up and it stopped. And it's not going up anymore, pretty much. And we've been still going in the same line there. And it's sometimes demotivating seeing just still the same stuff, still the same issues, internal drama going around. Um, I've myself been kind of demotivated lately about Kochi no Yakuza that I 
joined before I joined the Milsim community to maybe get new motivation, um, new ideas. And, you know, it helped. It helped getting into a new new place. And, and now I feel better again about the whole roleplay activity, let's say. Mm. I was going to say, um, you know, speaking like, you know, kind of a burnout type of situation um, for those that mm. are maybe maybe community leaders or like fellow community leaders or uh, maybe someone who's working hard on VR chat projects. What's something you can recommend to like prevent burnout, you know, because it, it happens to everyone, whether they mm. like it or not, you know. So what are, mm. what are some good ways that you think would inspire people? Mm. Prevent the burnout. I am... I'm unsure because I I am the person who always gets burnt out, but um, taking a break from overall VR chat, taking a break from the whole community can help. I I listen. I've been I've been a second in command of the coach before because um, the founder has taken a half of a half a year break, and you know at first. Uh, he was feeling really bad that he couldn't participate in stuff really anymore. He couldn't work on stuff. But in the end, he was so relieved that he couldn't, he didn't have to deal with it at least for some time. So if you're a staff of a community, if you're a founder, like leader, anything, like don't be afraid to take a break. It always helps. It helps you restart your mind, think about stuff. Maybe I have the issue that I get irritated a lot when i get into a burnout state anything and everything irritates me so that's my cue that i need to take a break so i do for example i joined the vive for community i i basically got my, my got my mind off of the staff um uh staff responsibilities i have to deal with in cocho i went to a different community helped me reset my mind a bit and now i'm i feel more refreshed Right, so don't be afraid to take a break. It's even if you take a break, I don't know, go to a different community or just take a break overall from VR chat or anything really, even Discord related. I used to mute the whole Discord so I don't check it. So t maybe play some games with your different friends. I like, uh, even if the VR chat friends, but don't care about the VR chat community, just go play different games. That's also a thing. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, uh, I've been also I I got into Fortnite. I I've hated Fortnite the whole life, and suddenly I'm playing Fortnite. <laughs> Yo, cranked in '90s with a Yakuza. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, def I'll definitely have to hit you up on that someday. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's it's funny. It, now, now all I can imagine is, uh, is, uh, oh God, I, I've, I'm uncultured when it comes to the Yakuza games, but I just imagine like, uh, the main character of Yakuza just cranking nineties and mm. then just emoting him with, uh, Dame Dame. And it's like, I, I, that would be, pro <laughs> <laughs> like, that would be, I, that, that'd be hilarious. Listen, I don't, th um, if you don't know about the Yakuza stuff, I don't think, okay, there's so much memes on VR chat about Yakuza. I can, I swear to God, uh, when we're done, I'm going to show you some stuff because you, you, you need to get more cultured about this. <laughs> fair. No, that's absolutely fair. I, I'd be definitely down to. Uh, I know, I know some of the memes from the games, but like I, I've personally never yeah, fully yeah. experienced the games themselves. And that's 100% mm. on me. I'm uncultured shit happens um <laughs> um but no i i definitely agree with what you said uh about taking a break it, it took me it, it took me to get a break from everything you know just kind of just kind of set myself back um and that's one of the reasons why i was able to do like projects with other communities um you know and working mm. with creators um you know and that's you know, essentially what drove me to become better and, you know, start this podcast, um, mm. you know, just to give myself a new take on, you know, what I do inside this platform as well as life, you know, um, 
And that's why I always, you know, respect other creators, you know, not just as creators, but as people, you know, because every, every person in life has their, you know, their downfalls, their, their problems that they have in life, you know, nobody's life is perfect, you know, and that's something that, you know, I like to kind of explore, you know, because obviously we can all seem happy behind the VR mask, you know, or the VR headset. But true, you know, true. In, but inside it's, you know, it's a whole different ball game, you know, and that's why I like to get into the minds of the creators, you know, to kind of show that, you know, these community leaders, these creators, you know, they're, they're just people just like, you know, like myself, like you, mm. like the general listening audience, you know, it's just p- p- people make cool things on this platform. And mm. unfortunately, uh, a lot of it doesn't see the light of day to the VR chat community because of its, you know, because of how things work in VR chat. Um, of course, you can yeah. like pay to advertise, which is not a bad thing, but it also deters people from like promoting their stuff. Um, so I know, speaking of like promoting yeah. stuff, uh, y- you know, you-, you said there was, it was kind of like a plateau moment when it comes to growing the community. Um, you know, I know Kocho has been to a few different uh, conventions here in VR, um, you know, kind of promoting your guys' stuff. Like, what would would you say those are beneficial uh, for, like, growing and stuff? Or, you know, what what's, like, what's the experience as a community uh, representative? Like, what, uh, what, how did it benefit or maybe not benefit, uh, you know, your guys' community? Uh, so... I, it's definitely better to be out there, you know, it's, it helps, it can help it in its own way, but uh, for example, the last two attempts that we had at both PJKT Fest and Avi Fair, where we also participated, we didn't really get that much people in the, in, in the community. True is that PJKT, uh, PJKT Fest actually had a lot more people come into our discord than avi fair but um, in the end not a lot of the people actually stay for the role play um the it's even from horrorcon actually i remember even on horrorcon some people actually joined of horrorcon but it's like one or two people pjkt fest had tiny bit more but um Cannot really, cannot really see. Uh, how do I say that? Those those people are not really the active people. You rarely see them. It's yeah. it's the people who are in active role play like communities. You know who are already active in role play that stay mostly. A lot of the people that we have are also part of different communities. As I said, Vifor, Mortician Syndicate, or even Blue Star. Blue Star is a community that was founded by one of our former staff members. You know, it's people who are already role players. But people who are new don't usually show up that much. I've, we've had many people try to join in, and those people never stayed. And it's just, I don't even know how to describe it. It's kind of, as I said, demotivating that just we don't, we don't get the waves of new people anymore how we used to, and we don't really know how to improve on that. And those festivals, they are great, they are very fun, but our last attempts didn't really help us. I gotcha. You know, and I wonder if this is maybe maybe a deterrent, you know, because with Coach no Yakuza specifically, um, a lot of your staff um, and a lot of your heads, if I'm not, correct me if I'm wrong, um, a lot of them are based out in EU, correct? Most of them, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, because I know you guys do, like, later events, which kind of a little help a little with the NA times. Um you know, do you think there is some type of barrier between, you know, the EU side versus the NA side? Uh, there's been a bunch of times where we had people come in and be like, oh, you're EU based. I Sadly, I cannot join that. Uh, bye. 
Like we we've had those people, and we are trying to be more inclusive on the uh, NA side, but uh, we are in the end a European roleplay community, so we are operating in th at uh, 9 p.m. CET or 3 p.m. EST. So 3 p.m. EST is like it's very very early, but at the same time it's also it's the it's the more ideal time we can get. It's the prime time that we can get, um, you know, for both sides, NA and EU. But we also have uh, people from Asia. We have Australian people. And we also can accommodate them as well as those, as NA. But it's just, I don't know. The, the, we, we, have, we have tried to look into what is the best time for us to host events and the prime time always has been 9 p.m. CET or 3 p.m. EST. Basically, mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the same time, just, you know, time zones. So, um, it's... I don't know. I could definitely... People come in and be demotivated that it's not an A, but well, what can we do, really? Yeah, I could definitely see how it's disheartening, you know. I mean, especially yeah. with all the cool stuff you guys do, you know. I, I I definitely mm. hope, you know, more, you know, NA people are more interested. Um, I hope in general people are more interested. Mm. I mean, I've I've been, like, I've, I'm trying not to, like, bounce up and down with, like, how much I'm learning, you know, because this is really cool information, <laughs> you know. It, it's it's one of those things, like, it, it, it definitely, it, it's definitely a cool concept, you know. Granted, you know, with mm. a lot of communities, you know, with Yakuza being the, the main topic, you know, it, maybe people aren't just interested in yakuza i mean there there could be so many different you mm. know there could be a lot of different things you know it's a, it's all a matter of preference mm. um you know but i mean from what i'm hearing and from what i already know like i'm definitely like loving you know i'm loving listening to like you know stuff like this which is you know why i do the longer episodes of the podcast because i get the chance mm. to fully listening immerse myself into what it's like to be in said communities <laughs> you know which is essentially what and, I i'm hope not even telling like. you about the fun st the, the, the 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 cool stuff that we have i know <laughs> and it's like like yeah i would I, yeah like it, and what's nice is that, you know you can keep it a little bit of a secret you know for the people you know, or if you want to go maybe into a few things, just kind of, you know, tease a little bit of what you guys do on the fun side, you know, it's, it's what's nice about this podcast. <laughs> I mean, um, so on New Year's between the 20, the 2023rd and 2024th, we had an IRL meetup, the first IRL meetup we ever had in Germany. And it was a hell of a fun time and we we're planning more. Hell yeah. Possibly by yearly. <laughs> that would be cool. But what I wanted to tell you, for example, what is a very big whoa effect for people is the fact that, for example, we have our own program, the bot, that tracks our attendance, tracks our economy, tracks most of the stuff that you can you can think of within the community. And it was de developed by our own staff member interesting it's so, not anything third party it's our own thing oh nice so like yeah just it keeps track of everything so like you don't physically have to pretty much that's awesome pretty much we have a bunch of commands so we have our own economy we have the currency called crypto yen or cn for short and uh, every single player within the community has her uh, has their own as if bank account where uh, you get your money and uh, you can buy stuff for the money, right? In our eShops and whatsoever, you earn the money based on uh, the events that you go to. But uh, the bot basically has the so-called uh, account for each player where it keeps track of the money. It keeps track of um, when was it sent, when was it, what it was for, uh, you know, all the details like this. And we can just use slash commands and wire it bit between each other, for example. You can just send the money to someone else. Or we pay out events with that command. Like, 
we have IDs of uh, the attendants, the bot sees who attended those events, for how long, if it was a player on an NPC, and based on that, we add in certain information like, oh, this event, oh, the event host wants to pay them 100 CN. So the the treasurers add that button, add that it was like 100 CN for players, and the bot takes care of that. That's that's awesome. And the bot, the bot also helps us, for example. Um, tracking all the players within the community, tracking the inactive people in the community, helping us delete the inactive people from the community. Um, what else is there? Uh, finding stuff, the economy, events. What else is there? Like there's, there's so much that we can do with the bot, and it's so helpful. Because and it's it's even better that it's developed from our own people, so we can always edit it to whatever we need, and we don't have to rely on anyone else. Yeah, it's always it only nice. our own people. No, it, it's really cool that you got all these backend stuff too. You know, like it's it's truly inspiring yeah. to hear all this stuff. Like, granted, um, a lot of what I do. It's not done by me, like this world, like all the camera views you guys see on the podcast. That was all made in this world by Xerix, um, who's a phenomenal world creator. Um, hopefully he'll uh, eventually get on the Agreed. podcast. He'll eventually get on the podcast. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep bugging him. Uh, he's a busy man, though. Uh, he actually just played a performance uh, IRL. Um, but yeah, no, uh, you know, it's really cool to have stuff made by the community to essentially assist you in what you guys do yeah. you know it's all in-house which is nice so yeah no it's it coach no yakuza you know i i know gear shouted them out but i'm gonna i'm gonna shout them out too like they're a fantastic community you know i highly recommend going to check them out on discord um or any of the uh you know social stuff that they've been a part of like the project community um you know videos and some of the other videos that they do as well um yeah, no, it's 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 really it's really cool stuff. Um, you guys are correct me if I'm wrong. You guys, because I know you guys do, uh, you guys do seasons kind of like kind of a thing for like the actual RP story, right? Um, mm -hmm. yeah. When when we have uh when we have our RP lore, like the main lore of the wall community, we have seasons of it. For example, lasting a month or two. The last season that we had was literally us trying to get our Kaicho the like the main head of the whole clan. Um, we were trying to get them out of jail and we were searching for clues. We were fighting off the bad guys that framed the Kaicho because the Kaicho was in there uh, not justified. It was framed for murder, basically. And uh, we were like getting all the clues, fighting off the bad people. And in the end, the final event was literally a trial in in a courtroom where we had a team of just our our own people, like the members of the community, like five people were lawyers of the Kaicho, and we were trying to get them out of jail. Huh. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, no, I mean, that's definitely cool that you guys do it in like, you know, I don't know if, I wouldn't call it episodic, but you do it in seasons, you know, and it has a specific mm. uh, goal in mind, a prospect in mind. You know, that that's cool to yeah. think about. Um, so I will say, because um, we are getting a little bit uh, towards the end. Um, first of all, Coach no Yakuza, y'all are amazing. For those that are watching, <laughs> I see you. Um, but let's let's talk let's talk Yuki. You know you you do all this amazing oh, no. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Aha. No, but you know you you're a community leader with a bunch of different um, you know like VR conventions and stuff. Um, but you also you also do avatar work as well. Um, earlier you were saying you were doing mm -hmm. avatar, and for those that don't know, fun little fact. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna shout this out. Um, without Yuki uh, no. here, without Yuki here, I would not be what I look like today. Um, Yuki is an amazing avatar creator who got me to look like what I am today, um, and I'm forever grateful. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to, wanted to, wanted to, uh, anytime, anytime anybody asks me, um, they're like, oh, is that a customer? I'm like, 
it's a mean essay base, but the person who made it is this, you know, this fine individual, you know, yeah, I, I always, I always try to shout you out as much as I can. Cause you know, people, people recognize good work, you know, and you did, you, you did amazing work <laughs> um but yeah without yuki you well, know i still do think that you look awesome like this so it looks hey. way better than what you had before true <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway but yeah no without without yuki here I, I wouldn't look like you know what i do today and you know um so you've done obviously you've done my avatar you know you do some other avatar commissions uh related stuff um you know I just mainly wanted mainly wanted to point that out because uh you know not it's not a shameless plug if the person that's plugging it is the guy who you know <laughs> is making the <laughs> podcast um but no uh you know do you do you do commission work still or you know is it you know kind of on hiatus like uh, uh okay so I still do commission work the thing is, I'm more picky over what I do because if I see like, hey, that commission is easy to do, I will do it. Um, I've recently had three people in like two days come at me and say, hey, do my avatar. So I was really busy lately about like avatar work and so on. I still am. But um, I've recently had even uh, better creations than this, I would say. <laughs> and <laughs> honestly i've i've been i've been thriving with avatar work i i love avatar work i love working like f uh, on avatars for different people always love to see how much they love the avatars and so on so i still do avatar work um but i still do have to say like my avatars are purely kid bash like i'm just taking assets and i'm putting them together I'm, uh, I do not do stuff from scratch, but um, I do, I love Blender work. I love doing the all assembling it in Unity part, just like your avatar. I basically put it together in Blender and then I made it work in Unity. And I love doing that. I always like, even if it's something that I cannot do right now, I will try to like learn it. Like uh, what I had with the throwing hat with your avatar. I've never did that and I still made it possible, you know, even if it's a little janky, I don't know. <laughs> no, it, it works fine. It, it, it works fine. I can't do it while I'm sitting down, but it's fine. P if people see me in VR, they've <laughs> seen me throw my head around because of I get bored easily whenever I'm not doing anything active. So, <laughs> it, trust me, the the feature is being used. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> that's good to know. Yeah, and eventually, uh, we we might talk down the line of like, you know, different outfits because uh, that's something a lot of people have been asking me. Um, I can't oh. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten asked to do a beach or pool type of attire for this avatar, and I'm like. <laughs> like you know i you know I, like it, it's becoming so frequent that i'm like maybe i should have a, an outfit of it you know like it, it's one of those things <laughs> Why not? But, right you know and uh, definitely like a suit type of variant you know stuff we, we've talked about this before when we were in the uh when we were in the draft room for the <laughs> avatar though so, but now now that i'm getting requested to actually do such things i'm like maybe i should <laughs> you know just to give it some variant <laughs> Um, you know, I, I love, I love this jacket, you know, it, it represents all the communities and, you know, the yeah. choirs that I work with, um, and direct. So it, it's definitely going to be the main, the main outfit to say the least, but to have a little variance, it won't <laughs> be too bad. Yeah. You know. I mean, recently I also got myself a bunch of variants for my avatar and, uh, mind you, my avatar right now is probably even... A uh, different avatar than you remember me in because I back then when I met you I used to do I used to have a certain base now what my base is is that I took the hat of my old base and I put it on a different body oh wow okay fair enough interesting so I have even more outfit variations right now because I have a different body and I have more um I have more abilities to do different outfits more resources, you know, better, better body, better outfits. <laughs> I gotcha. I gotcha. But I pretty much, 
recently recently like if you think about it i do avatar work mostly for kochi no yakuza like i think that your avatar was the only one that i had outside of the community <laughs> so far it's been <laughs> the only one outside of the community and I will take uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> worth I every currently penny i am an avatar dev for uh one two three four five six i think so like six seven people i'm an active avatar dev of so it's uh that those people basically tell me what they want i make the avatar and i am the one who is still constantly updating it like uh because they don't know unity and they are not really into learning about it they just entrust me with the wall with their wall avatar stuff and they always tell me like hey i want this can you put it on i do it and upload it on their account like i'm just uh basically their active avatar dev for at least six people now not including me oh jeez <laughs> <laughs> definitely a lot of work in that i believe you know cuz i uh, um i do have 136 avatars uploaded at the moment <laughs> but oh, wow <laughs> yeah <laughs> jesus <laughs> i couldn't even imagine having that much like i think i have like 11 i think and like <laughs> i think six of them are variants of this with different type of assets that i've gotten over the past like uh like 6 months i believe yeah around 6 months mm -hmm. um you know, including like a D20 and trombone from Wingman Jaws and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. the elemental katana I got from a Lindy VR. Um, mm. We'll talk about those assets on another date. But, you know, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's it's definitely, uh, you know, it's definitely crazy, you know, how much, you know, not only do you have, you know, community ambassador role, but you also do like other things as well, which is, you know definitely a cool thing to you know broaden the horizon we're not uh, we're not counting pjkt into it yet i'm a team lead at pjkt too this is true yeah <laughs> this is true you did get promoted to uh team lead uh at pjkt which is awesome yeah um but you know i love i love the pjkt people y'all been fantastic at uh you know wanting to come on the podcast because i got like six others from pjkt that want to you know hop on the podcast <laughs> so yeah no it yeah that's why i don't typically go into like specifically pjkt because it'd be a long <laughs> i could i could make a long episode by itself on, yeah. like each of the people you know this is mainly about the creators <laughs> themselves um and what they do specifically you know um, as much as I love the PJKT family, you know, you, you guys are always in my heart. Um, yeah, you get it. You just don't want me to talk about PJKT. We know, we know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not it at all. Um, <laughs> but, however, um, on that note, we actually are out of time. Uh, so before we go, though, I do want to give you a spot to um, essentially promote anything that you want to promote in the description uh, or something that you would like to tell the listeners. Um, obviously, don't, you know, don't be don't be mean to my listeners, <laughs> but um, I hate know. the L. <laughs> um, no, but but no, yeah. If you want to, you know, tell them, you know, any upcoming things that you got going on, uh, any links to put in the description, you know, this would be your chance mm. to shine. Uh, aside from being completely obvious, well, so mainly mainly think that I, I obviously would like to promote hey it's the community so right coach no yakuza uh you can find uh, you can find us at discord kocho yakuza there's no no in in there just kocho yakuza and uh, we also have a twitter we have or rather x not twitter uh we Elon have up. uh youtube um that are not that active but for example you can even find uh some of our information on vrc legends uh which i am keeping track of we are still updating that you can find some of the stuff there maybe some little lore summary seeing some photos in there we are currently two and a half years old with the community still going pretty strong i would say i would suppose 
Um, definitely would love to see more people, hey. And even if you don't want to roleplay, you can just hang out in the Discord. You can just get a civilian role and just hang out and play some games with us. I'm in, I'm personally in the Discord almost 24-7. So yeah, that's that's really about it. And the other thing that I might want to promote is my Twitch channel. <laughs> sure, yeah, go for it, go for it. Because I I used to be a I used to be a streamer. Sadly, I'm not active anymore. But hey, uh, I want to get back to streaming. Maybe even stream some Blender and Unity. You can teach. Uh, you can learn a thing a thing or two from me streaming. So yeah, find me. You can find me at the Twitch called Yukini. So you know my name Yuki. So just add double N I E in there, and that's me. Perfect. <laughs> and like I said, all, all of these links will be in the description, uh, both on the YouTube side and Spotify side. Uh, so please make sure to go check out the links down below. Or if you're on Spotify, it might be over there. Depends on what platform you're on. Uh, so yeah, Yuki, thank you so much for being on No Bed Notes. We, I, I appreciate you being here. I, keep, I say we like there's more than just me on the staff. Big shrug. <laughs> I, I noticed that in the episode two, I, I said we a lot. Uh, and uh, one of the bloopers was uh, uh, the, <laughs> the the last guest, Zaya. He was like, who the hell is we? <laughs> I'm not going to see these people. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, that's fair. Um, but yeah, no, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Uh, hopefully, I know it's like, <laughs> it was you know, my pleasure. it's probably like two, three in the morning for you at this point. So, uh, two, 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 two yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Cause you know, while I'm, you know, central time us, um, yeah, Yuki's on the polar opposite side of the world. <laughs> um, Czech yeah. Republic, baby. Yeah. Ah, I did get it right. Okay. You know, I said it on the second. I saw. I said it on the second episode. I was like, I was like, yeah, we got a guest from Czech Republic coming on, and I was like, I really hope I didn't say the wrong Czech, because I would have felt so. I would have felt so bad, and I would have. I would have forced myself to edit that out. Um. But yeah, no. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Um, is a pleasure having you here. But yeah. Make sure you go check out Coach No Yakuza. Uh, make sure to check out uh, Yuki's Twitch channel as well. And uh, yeah, we will see you in the next episode of Nova Notes. Take can care. Can I do a thing? Can I, can I oh. do a thing? Can I do a thing? Can I do a thing? Yeah, hold on. Let me switch camera <laughs> angles. Go for it. Uh, okay, give me a second. Uh, 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 okay, good. So thank you for having me, Nova. Otskarasama des. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh geez oh my pleasure <laughs> I, i'm, I'm kind of <laughs> sitting down so i can't really like bow as much as i'd like to but yes thank you thank you and y'all take care thank you for listening to nova notes and we will see you in the next episode <laughs> <laughs>